quarter, but not 28 inches. This is the minimum. finder so it might head in Quite blustery. This, this uh, tide's about to change too, or it just did change. So that means the wave's gonna get lifted up. So I'm gonna head into the river. The old salt loves going downwind. Stays nice and balanced. It's hard to film and steer at the same time, but. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go into the river and something that I've been meaning to do for a long time is like a, just a safety check, kind of see what stuff I have on the boat um, to stay safe. I've gotten comments over the months about going, you know, far offshore and it's irresponsible and the like. So I wanna talk a little bit about that. So I'll be in the river and I'll find a little quiet spot out of the wind and we'll check. All right, I found a little spot out of the wind. Actually has a little bit of shade too, which is nice. I've seen Petasquamps get cove. I really only come over here when it's high tide, but it's really cool because nobody really comes over here. Nice and quiet. Can't tell if I'm in the picture. Looks like it. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is risk. I think everybody has their own comfort zone when it comes to risk. The level of um, fear that they have, <laughs> I'm sure plays a part of it. And like for instance, I think jumping out of a plane is risky and probably wouldn't do it. I'm also afraid of heights, so. That would be, you know, a level of risk that I'm not willing to take. And then the skydiver, you know, professional skydiver would say, you're ridiculous. Like, it's very safe if I have all the safety equipment, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's different levels. Like, some people won't even leave the house because um, they think it's too risky. I mean, you're taking risks every day. You're driving by cars and you're trusting that they're not going to turn into the, go over the median and, slam into you so you're trusting other people every day so when i get the comments on youtube about um it's irresponsible uh, <laughs> so it's irresponsible to go offshore like that in such a small boat um it doesn't feel irresponsible to me because i've looked at the weather and the wave heights and am comfortable that the old salt can handle it so and I'm also comfortable with the safety precautions that I've taken so let me talk a little bit about those safety precautions um, first and foremost I'm on a 1965 Boston Whaler hull the unsinkable legend I says it right there in small print um, so it won't sink so it might it could flip over um, I have a hard time imagining a situation where I would flip over, but it does happen. I guess if I lost steering, you know, and I was going at a high rate of speed that I might flip over, or if a whale decided they didn't like my presence, they could flip me over. But those are the two things I guess that could happen, or a rogue wave I hit, but I'm normally quite 
careful as far as speed I'm going and certain times uh, certain types of waves so we unsinkable legend here um, won't sink so I feel pretty comfortable going offshore in, with that and I also have a Yamaha F70 four-stroke it uh, very reliable haven't had any breakdowns always brings me home knock on wood um, and I also have sea tow you know so I can always call for a tow if I need to so the you know those are the solid things that I feel help with the safety the other things um, and I'm, I, I'm not even gonna be able to talk about all of them because I don't want to make this a 40 minute video but obviously life jacket bring a life jacket for each person that's on board I have a uh, probably half a dozen on board I have the kind that I wear and if I fell overboard, they inflate automatically. And then I have th these kind that I wear. Um, and then some of the required, other required stuff that you have to have on board. I, this is a, actually a relatively recent purchase. They replace flares. Um, and this thing sends out like an SOS lighted signal when you turn it on. And I have the flares also. Um, but I guess I won't have to buy these flares anymore because they expire after so many years and then you have to buy new ones. So I'm pretty happy about that situation. Obviously I have a fire extinguisher. Boats, uh, fire on boats are scary. One of the um, scariest things that can happen. So I have a, uh, this is actually pretty new too. A new fire extinguisher goes under my console there and hangs out I have a radio that you heard just go a second ago um, I also have another kind that I take offshore and it has a positioning thing on it so if I push that button it sends out a signal uh, to the on the VHF radio so if there's anybody in that area they would hear that signal I'm not actually sure how that works how it sends a signal to the Coast Guard but in any event I have another one and that's a waterproof floating VHF radio so that I take that off shore but I mostly use that one because it works better I have a first aid kit in case I scrape myself on a fish or something I actually just got back from the doctor who gave me some antibiotics for this finger that got scratched by a fish and I think I got some of that I think they call it fish poison so they gave me an antibiotic so that'll go away I also have this gun these gun type flares um, in case I ever need that to get some height and then I've got the sound maker which is like an air horn <laughs> this gets very loud actually and that's also Coast Guard approved I've got a distress signal flag red just it's just a red flag that I can wave back and forth to get somebody's attention just another whistle <laughs> and I also have an EPIRB if you're not familiar with an EPIRB an EPIRB is if this goes over into the water it'll automatically start sending a signal I can also activate this by sliding you know pulling this sliding this and pushing the button this sends a signal to the satellite the satellites send the signal to the coast guard or actually a response center of some sort um EPIRB response center and they come get me hopefully i never have to use this but i do have it on board mostly for those offshore situations because um, i have a radio and everything else and you're only supposed to use this if you've tried everything else to like self-rescue other boats tried your VHF and you really feel like you're in a life-threatening situation that's when you use the the herb e -perb. um so some other things like you don't necessarily think of you know you have to you have to have an anchor on your boat that way you know if you lose power and you have the winds blowing you towards shore you can anchor and not end up on the rocks um, I've got a stern anchor and a bow anchor. I always carry my mask and snorkel. I think this would be more relevant maybe for a bigger boat, 
if, if something got caught in the prop, if you had to go under there and, and uh, take care of that. Um, but I always have it just in case. Um, what else can I tell you? All my, I have all my navigation lights and stuff are wor in working order. I'm, rarely am I out in the dark in this boat. Um, I just, it doesn't feel extra safe and I don't necessarily like doing it in a smaller boat, but I do, I do occasionally. I don't know if I call this a safety thing, but I got a 22 gallon tank that gets me maybe um, 140 miles or so. So I know that I'm safe going 40 miles off of shore and coming back and having plenty of fuel. I guess that would be a safety thing, making sure you can get back. So um, those are the things that keep me safe out here. I have the chart plotters next to the camera right there um, that keeps me, the navigation going. I also have a backup chart plotter on an older cell phone that I can use if for some reason that one goes. I've got a compass on board. Um, yeah, I think that covers most eventualities. So I do get a, a lot of comments where boaters say, I, you know, I've got new confidence. I'm going to go further. <laughs> and it does make me pause a little bit, hoping that the people that do decide to go further and, um, you know, use their little boat for adventures and whatnot are carrying the correct safety gear. So do the right thing. Take care of yourself. Your loved ones need you. All right. Thanks for watching that. If I come up with anything else, I'll point it out. Yeah, so I also have, this, this is a new law actually, to have this lanyard hooked up to you. It's a dead man switch. Like if I did fall overboard, this was attached to me, it would kill the engine so I don't watch my boat <laughs> go away. Um, you're supposed to have a throwable on board. I have a bucket. Um, for bailing, if I need to, I also have a, a pump for that, uh, a bilge pump that does that automatically, but you never know if that's going to go or not. Um, yeah. I also have this bucket full of tools um, in case the engine has an issue. I've got some weapons over here. I do carry my Beretta when I'm offshore most of the time. I don't know exactly why, but if someone wanted to be not nice, I'd like to at least have that protection. And there's some bug spray. I've got a ladder to get on the boat down there. This is my bucket. Here's my other anchor. Yeah, so that's um, those, that's most of the safety equipment. There's one more thing that's important to have is the emergency M and M's. Gotta have them just in case. I do carry lots of water, also big jugs like little jugs like that um, to stay hydrated on the water because that's important too. Back out into the wind. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe.